watching kids realise that they can do something like this and achieve success in maths is, is just such a wonderful feeling. Um, maths is such an important part of our world and um, I think that it's such a vital skill that has had such a negative stigma for so long and it's good to see kids feeling confident and happy about being part of maths activities. Children often ask when they're in school, why are we doing this? Uh, and numeracy gives you the reason why you're doing things. Mathematics can sometimes seem quite academic for children uh, and particularly when they're going to in secondary school, they're thinking, oh, you know, mathematics is too far removed from my life. But numeracy makes it part of your life. It's the everyday. Numeracy involves time. Have I got enough time to go to the cleaners on my way to work? Because you have to, you know, actually estimate that amount of time. And estimation is a huge numeracy um, uh, attribute. Our students struggled with numeracy in their nap plan and pat testing. And in particular, they struggle with number and the concept of number. And that was or out in our SACE results as well, where students in the external exams in particular weren't getting in the numerate part of the questions. And then also when we looked at their PAT data and the number questions in PAT in particular, we found there was probably only about 30% of the students getting the number questions in PAT correct. So we wanted to lift our results and we saw the big ideas in number as a, because it's a diagnostic test, we could use it and then move them forward with the math strategy. So the big idea is a number or a diagnostic tool and intervention kit that was made by Di Seaman from uh, RMIT in Victoria. And the big ideas are trusting the count. And this is a concept that we need children to establish very early on when they come to school. Usually we expect them to you know, trust the count by the middle of year one. And we build on top of that by doing place value, which is the next big idea. And understanding place value gets children to understand you know, our uh, decimal system. We've got a wonderful pattern in our decimal system and place value is what gets children to see that pattern and understand and manipulate the pattern. And then after that we get them to, to move from additive thinking to multiplicative thinking because we want them to be able to work efficiently with numbers. And if you can't think multiplicative, you think it's very slow, it's all very slow. And if you don't have multiplicative thinking, you can't move on to then working with rational numbers. So we're thinking about fractions, decimals, percentages, and that's what we need them thinking about when we're doing uh, that, that part of the big idea. And after that, it's proportional reading, reasoning, very important for all of our curriculum areas, and then it's generalizing. And even though children start generalizing even before before they start school and even before they start preschool, uh, we really home into it around year seven, year eight because it becomes incredibly important for those efficient manipulatives of uh, mathematics throughout their schooling and their university years. And we know that we can't build on children's conceptual knowledge if we don't address the misconception because they just don't have a frame to accept that knowledge. Um, and that's why in the guidebooks we recommend that you do a diagnostic first, you know, see where the children are at, see what they're thinking, and then we build on that. The big idea in number um, intervention groups have worked based around the testing that we've done as a site. So. Um, we started the process by testing all of the students on trusting the count and that's looking at um, can they sabotage which is the skill of looking at a collection of dots and knowing being able to automatically um, know how many are there and as a general rule we sabotage um, up to five so um, beyond five then it's looking at the strategies we use to add those together. So from that testing when we first started um, we found out that most students were not able to trust the count in the, in, on our site. So we then put in um, an agreement with all the staff and teachers that worked here and we uh, established a routine that happened in the classroom where it was I do, we do, you do, where we're looking at all of the um, big idea and number strategies that are from the Ann Baker book and we applied them into our lesson times. We do it through game, a lot through gameplay, so where they're getting to practice the explicit skill that's taught at the beginning of the lesson, and um, that just gives them opportunity to use the language that we've taught and opportunity to practice that skill in a multiple of scenarios and games. So our next part of today, we're gonna to use what we've just um, practiced in a game, um, and we're going to play this game, which we've played once before, unit, fraction, cover up. So that's where the first person, uh, the counters start in the centre of the, of the both squares up the top. So we've got these two squares up there. The first person gets to move them. 
and they work out, so for example, if I was to find one fifth of 20, how, divide 20 into five, yep, four. And so then that person could then cover up the four with a counter. So where have you moved the counter to? Well, my fraction is one third and my whole number is 12. Okay, and yep. I need to divide 12 by three. Okay. Four. Yeah. So where's four? Where's four? Can yeah, you right find here. it there? Yep. And that's why did you choose three? Can you tell me why? So the difference between before we started and now, I've really noticed that students are more um, engaged with other areas of the mathematics curriculum. They're able to explain and justify their reasons when they're talking about their learning. And so the pro end product of what they're doing is a lot deeper. The samples that I'm getting are more, they're more varied. So I'm getting deeper learning from students than I was before they started this Big Idea in Number journey. Uh, it's been a really rewarding process in the fact that you've got students that were groaning as you'd begin your maths lesson to now, they're embracing that challenge, they feel confident and ready to um, undertake different tasks and, and can do it independently, whereas before they would be quite nervous and scared. The gains have been great, so again, our, if we look at PAT testing, that's all we had this year. Again, we've got more, more than 70% now getting at least 50% of the number questions right uh, and even the children are more confident now because they have a number of strategies with which they can solve maths problems, it's not just one way. They can use the strategies they're most confident with and then use them to work out um, any numeracy type problem that we have. I've noticed the difference in students is that they're excited about maths, they look forward to what we're doing, they um, enjoy the games, they enjoy the success that they're achieving and being able to talk and explain and, and uh, justify what, why they're thinking what they're thinking and that's a good feeling for the students. So as you know number underpins all, well, 70% of the mathematics in our uh, Australian curriculum. Uh, it, not only that, it is foundational for numeracy across the curriculum. So you think of uh, any curriculum area, you're going to need some of this number sense. So if you think about chemistry, you need to know about proportional reasoning. If you think about um, tech, you're going to need to know, you know, those percentages and fractions, you know. So number is incredibly important. Um, so if you, if, you, if you understand that number is important, uh, you know that this development of the concepts which are going to be the foundation of that future learning have to be important as well. And that's why the guidebooks really, they start off with attitudes. We want a positive attitude towards maths, but the next thing we want to know is that they have number sense. Because if you have number sense, 70% of the curriculum becomes open to you. Uh, what, what advice would I give to someone who is uh, looking at taking on Big Idea in Number? Jump in. Jump in and give it a go because put aside your preconceived ideas of what maths looks like and um, trust the data and go through the process because only you and your students will benefit from what you've got to, to learn from Big Idea in Number. So I would always recommend Big Ideas in Number. It, it actually helps teachers to know where to start because that's what the diagnostic does. It helps you to know where, what the children's current understanding is and it helps you to build that understanding so they can accept the new knowledge. Uh, it's easy to use. And it, we have so many resources on our EDI uh, to support teachers who are thinking of going into Big Ideas in Number. We've got uh, PowerPoints, we have got videos, we've got uh, lots and lots of PDFs of the, of the Big Ideas in Number. Easy to download, easy to use.